I did change this to show all the posts of all the users. I want to change that back because that's a one way of avoiding, of course, people tr from trying to go to this route. There, are the, you know, there are other owners going to that route that does not belong to them. That's one way. So let's just go and take that and put it back to how we have had it before, right? So we were looking for all the auth user posts, just like that, right? And then we refresh and we get all the posts of that specific user. That's one way of avoiding that. The other way, the most commonly used way was to was the create policy, the update policy. Okay, this policy here, that's the other commonly used. When I say commonly used is that it, people use it more than anything else. So right here, we're using that. Okay, unless you're authorized to update that, you're not able to update that post. Now we can also do the delete right here. And that's going to be exactly the same thing right here. Okay, let's make sure. And then we can just use it. Let's come back here. Let's copy this and let's make sure that it is in our destroy method as well. Right here. Unless we are authorized to delete it, we're not going to delete it, right? Delete. Right? I don't even want people to view it unless you're authorized to view it. And even to save the post. We can just do it at the uh, the top here. So let's just do the store and make sure that we have that. Now this one, you might be thinking, okay, how can we access the post here? So we got to think about this a minute. First of all, when we are creating a post, the post has no owner, right? Well, the owner of the post would be the authenticated user. And we're just doing that right here. So it would be almost impossible Right, because we are detecting this from the back end, almost impossible for somebody to come here and say, okay, I'm going to be the owner of that post now. Right? So there is not a lot of cases where you want to use an authorization here, a policy, but when you want to use it, okay, if you got some type of really good hacker and they want to play a little bit rough, right, you can create a policy. Now, if you create a policy right there, like this, I'll show you. And you, you come here and you try to do this. Yeah. Okay. That's going to return false. It's going to return false no matter what you do. Right? So here in that create method, actually, we don't have a store method. Yeah, the create method. Let's just come back here. And let's do that again to show you that it's still, even if you change it to the right name, you still get not authorized. It's always going to come not authorized if you don't have anything in the method. So even though we were using the wrong method here, I was using store, it was always going to return false unless you give it some type of parameter here, right? So yeah, I could give it a parameter to be true here. And that would give me a, a way to, you know, to execute that. But I can also return something. I can also return, well, if the one making the request is the logged in user, go ahead and allow this authorization to happen, right? There we go, okay? So that would be a solution there. Now, for the most methods that are actually used, you can see the polls you can see the model right here. This is the most commonly used actions. Deleting, restoring stuff, force deleting. Okay, those are really hardcore stuff. But when you are creating something here, and keep in mind that this, this create method, you can see that you have a create functionality right there, right? You can, you can use this as well again here, right? So you can, if you want to, okay, check for the authenticated user. Maybe somebody from outside of our app 
is is trying to submit to this endpoint and is using their own server and has a hidden input of user ID and is trying to submit something to your data. Yes, that would be a possibility, right? But Laravel has so many ways of stopping this type this type of thing, especially with the forgery, cross-site forgery request uh, a directive here. Okay, it is getting a special token that's coming only from this form. It's not coming from outside. So there are many ways of preventing people that Laravel helps us in preventing from things like this happening to us. Okay, and policy is just one more of them. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this lecture, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.